Welcome to Real 45 with Stefan and Greg Hancock. We vibe out and have real talk, so tune in and check this out, yeah. Today is a new day, let's seize it now and get hype. We talking about our careers, our family, and just life, yeah. Share my story with you, inspiration like every day. Real 45, we gon' keep it live, I keep episodes on replay, Hey, Real 45, yeah, Real 45, show them how we do it, man. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Real 45, episode 3 with Greg Hancock. Greg, what's up with this week? Well, man, you know what? Uh, lots of things have been up and, you know, people probably been following some of the press and what's happening. And, uh, you know, we're pretty excited. This is our third episode. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on, man. Oh, that's cool. What do you think of the, new, the intro now when you heard it sometimes? Well, this intro has been a lot of talk in our last, you know, our last pod, which is like way back a week ago or something, way back. And uh, the intro is something we've been working on. Uh, that's uh, we wanted something cool for the show, so we bought a, a thing on the on the on a website that you can you can have somebody make a song for you. Right. You just pay like twenty bucks or something. Right. So we went for a rap artist in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> and that one just came out the other day, and and uh, we're kind of just running it by people to to see what we think. So. Uh, I think it's grown on me. I'm really getting into it. I've changed my dress code. I'm, I got a little bit more bling about me. And, uh, you know, the, the guests that we got today, you know, they're, they're really kind of uh, admiring my look. <laughs> so, hey, anyway, um, we have a new Speedway World Champion, yep. Jason Doyle. Congratulations to him. You know, I think it's, uh, uh, it's a cool thing, but it's not so cool for me because I'm sitting here just kind of drowning my sorrows. But uh, I got a new intro, so I'm, I'm getting over it. Um, and you know, Grand Prix, wild card nominations. I'm feeling pretty secure with that, but uh, nothing's ever true in, until it's there. But uh, I have big plans ahead. Um, I'm putting together a Grand Prix Speedway team for next year, so there'll be myself and one, possibly two other riders, and uh, even my buddy Gordon here. I don't know how much he knows about this, but uh, you guys are the first to hear it, literally. And I have uh, some cool things. It's nothing new, but it's going to be something that'll be a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more tailored to the sport to kind of bring it back into the new era, I think, and hope to make it grow and not be a team that just lasts for one or two years and then it's gone. It's something that I anticipate will be good for the future. So we're going to do what we can and uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, I wanted to explain to Stefan today that um, you know, this is obviously uh, uh, our third broadcast I just arrived in Scotland here in Glasgow, and uh, I'm pretty excited to to talk about the the guests we have here today. Which many people have been making a lot of speculations. I have a great collaboration with these guys. I'm happy to be here, and I'm going to let Stefan make the introduction. Yeah, welcome Gordon Perman, Jerry Fischena, and Peter Fischena to the show, and thank you for agreeing to join with us. What do you think about the new intro that we have? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I was just getting down to it when I was on there. <laughs> Well, these guys, um, what can I say? These, <laughs> I was kind of excited just looking at their, their faces when we played the intro. And it's going, you know, was, <laughs> they wanted to giggle, but they didn't. It was good. So, uh, hey, anyway, you know, I'm in Glasgow here for their, for their annual dinner and dance where they, they basically uh, they invite fans and sponsors and, and everything. Where they, and then there's, there's a nice dinner and a presentation, I imagine, that they're going to produce trophies to their Riders of the Year and highest point scores. Or I'm not really exactly sure. I'm kind of making it up as I go. Yeah, that's, that's about right, yeah. <laughs> but um, for me, you know, the, it's great to be here. These guys have been involved with me and my, my Speedway Grand Prix team, uh, my own stuff for the last couple of years and sponsoring a race suit in Cardiff, which is the Glasgow Tigers. It's been fantastic. You know, this uh, for me. Uh, in short, the connection with with Scotland is goes way back for me. I was I was Scottish champion in 1991 and 92. Right. <laughs> Not at Glasgow, but uh, in Edinburgh. Yeah, I was but, supposed to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So these guys are really they've done good. They've kind of lured me away from that part of the, the country. So I'm pretty ex- I'm pretty excited about good it. Catch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So and my my roots go back to the Cummings family. Uh, George and Christine Cummings and Craig Cummings who worked with Billy Hamill, mm-hmm. worked with uh, Jimmy Nielsen, uh, Sean Moran goes way back. Craig has been with quite a elite group of riders and uh, helped. A so I still have a connection with these guys and uh, I like Scottish pies too so. <laughs> my relationship obviously here with Gordon started with Gordon Pearman some years back I've known of and and been aware of Gordon for a number of years but uh, we officially met when I rode for for pool back in 2013 
I came in as a replacement for, for Chris Holder when he was injured. That was turn the season round. You know, Finn, it's turn the season round because we weren't going anywhere, I don't think. And it just suddenly we got a boost that we needed at that time. It was quite early on, wasn't it? Was it about July? Yeah, it ended up being there. And I was having a horrible season in Poland. Things weren't working out good. And, and uh, between yourselves and the phone call from Matt Ford saying, I can see that your season might finish quite early. What do you think about coming to help us out? <laughs> well, there you go. It's a, what the, bad, bad times and good times. But what a, re, what a year it was. I mean, it, it was, we just got on a roll. Because we weren't going anywhere. We weren't going to make the playoffs. You know, jumping in there too, you know, and I've ridden for a few clubs in, in England, but coming to Poole again, it was it really gave me a, a whole other outlook on British Speedway, literally, because I was tired of British Speedway at that stage. So, But the phone call from Matt Ford at that time, he, he must have been pre-rehearsed, and he, he's really good at his work, and Gordon's not too bad either. They, they know what to say when it needs to be said, and uh, it wasn't hard to make the decision to come there. And I saw immediately that the collaboration that you guys had with the riders, there was a lot of fun going on, there was a lot of desire, and it seemed like when Poole wanted to do something, they just made it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely was It was unreal, the things that were happening. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see, season turned around, um, and the momentum was there. And it's, it's, it's the strength in Poole is that the riders like being there. And the, and the weakness this year in Poole was that we had a rider who definitely didn't like being there. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the riders reacted to that, and uh, and they didn't want to be there with him either. And it's just just one person makes that makes such a difference. And and um, I would like to say it was you that made the difference, but it probably wasn't. It probably having Darcy was better, but, but you were all right. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take second best in number forty three. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I remember there. I think I, I didn't have many five ones with that guy, but I remember the first time I did. He made the five one happen. It wasn't me, <laughs> and uh, uh, I suddenly felt like I was Chris Holter at that stage and just kind of covering ground. But Darcy Ward, like, yeah, speaks for itself. Right. Okay. Unbelievable, exceptional. It's totally exceptional. And uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the first two matches I had were absolutely awful. And I called Matt Ford and I told him, I said, listen. You can pay me half the money and you can tell me to quit if you want because I'm having a hard time getting this figured out. And of course, in fine fashion, he was like, you'll figure it out, mate. It'll be fine. Just uh, keep rolling with us. And it worked out fantastic. In the end, I came home with my first ever British League title. I never had one. And I got one. That was an amazing thing. I Because you had ridden for a lot of very good teams and uh, successful teams, but never to have got the league championship, something I didn't know I mean, how, how big is your trophy cabinet? I mean, it must be it must be huge with with, with all these all the, all the different things that you won. But but you left the gap there. You left the gap for the one, the big one, the re- hell with the world championships. This was the big one. Re- win the British League, please. <laughs> I finally got. I finally had the one to put on the top. You know, the pyramid was growing, and uh, I finally got the one to put up there. <laughs> With, with the re- real silver back in the days, God, oh. was it? <laughs> yeah, that was the real stuff. I've just been cleaning out my loft. I said to Gordon earlier, too, and I found a lot of these old trophies and stuff in there, too. And it's amazing some of the things that you had. Compared to what we have today, it's so different, you know. Yeah. And getting a trophy is what it was all about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the, that was the proof, you know. But uh, anyway, we had great times there. And, and uh, you know, I, I saw a whole new world of British Speedway, as I said. To be a part of that club was, was awesome. And it it really gave me light and more belief in British Speedway again after some of the things that I was disappointed in. But we won't go into that today because that's not what it's about. But in the end, meeting this guy, Gordon, you know, he um, I remember that we just had a couple of, couple of drinks and a chat one night in Matt's uh, kitchen. And the first time I really got to know him and have a chat with him and was entertaining. And he, he taught me a lot in that early time. And then our relationship has grown more and more and I, I uh, feel like he's my consultant you know I call him for everything <laughs> and uh, but it, it's been great he, he still uh, educates me yeah good friend he educates me and he's kind of my my Google for British Speedway these days mm-hmm. I go to him when I need questions I got questions I want to understand how things work but not just Speedway it's a lot of other stuff too so uh, I'm grateful to have had the chance to meet this guy which I'm flattered. I'm flattered yeah. for that. But it has been fun, and it was. I mean, the, your trip to the Isle of Man when you came over to the Isle of Man <laughs> with uh, Lance King, and uh, uh, were uh, a little blown away by what you saw there, which is which is amazing because considering what you do for a living, and then to to be in awe of these guys on the bikes, it's the same as when John McGuinness, who's the the king of the mountain, 
comes to watch Speedway and he goes, I don't believe you guys were that fast. And it's just it's just this mutual admiration, which is good in professional sports. The Isle of Man, you need to come back. You need to get or you need to get monster to pay for you to come back again. You need, <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need to come back. Now you've not now you now you're unemployed on Sundays, you'll be able to fit more time in next year. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to run it. <laughs> <laughs> well, for many of you guys that don't know, uh, and Stefan, I know you don't uh, you don't know these guys, but Stefan's very well, very much aware of John McGinnis because he's seen the stuff that we post and, All right, and yes. he refers to it himself. Uh, Stefan builds my website and has done a lot of stuff with me and helped me with social media, so uh, he's aware. But Gordon, actually, the, when I went to the Isle of Man, he picked us up uh, from the airport, myself and Lance King and, and uh, his girlfriend, and that. Uh, he took us for a ride around the island in his car, so he got us up to pretty good speeds. And uh, at that point, when you think you're going fast, and some some crazy dude comes flying by you on the back wheel on a on a road bike, you just go, "Wow!" <laughs> that's how my trip to Island Man started, and then uh, it just got better. And uh, you know, I'm a huge fan. I will go back and visit uh, Gordon on the island again, and uh, next time we'll go on a bike. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great to see you, isn't it? We have to record that. Yeah, that's right. We'll record that one for sure. We'll have that one on a podcast. That's what he already said that. You can go to the island. We'll be live. We need to put a, put a microphone on John McGinnis. <laughs> no, you don't no, want to do that. No, you don't it might want to be good. No. You you'd have very little it was broadcastable, I think. That. <laughs> yes, for sure. Well, um, again, this can go on and on, and we don't want to drag this, this uh, podcast out a whole bunch, but... Through, through Gordon, he actually put me in touch with these great guys, uh, Jerry Fitch and I, and, and his son Peter, too, if I've got to know as well now, um, made a collaboration for the Grand Prix in, in Cardiff two years ago. and uh, Well, it was last year, I should say. But um, we did a really cool thing, and uh, I was super excited to do it, and I can't believe the amount of press yeah. and the amount of things that happened out of it. For me, I, I think it worked okay Absolutely, for you guys, yeah. too. And um, now we've developed kind of a following, and I've I've become much more interested in what Glasgow Speedway is doing, and seeing how you guys work and what you're doing. Now I understand more from my last trip here too. Uh, what's been happening with the stadium, with mm-hmm. the team, with, with surroundings, and the, the the property that you guys have acquired next door to, and what you want to do. Um, I can talk all day long about these guys because it's been again. I've gotten kind of a, a new kick, a new life in the British Speedway once again mm-hmm. after having these conversations. And it's uh, it's nice to see that because I've been very negative, as I said before. just feel like there's something's been missing and, and they need to think outside of the box. But then again, I'm also a guy who has gone on and moved to other leagues and doing different things. And you see good things they're doing there and things that you could be different. But I've always wanted to see British Speedway follow suit. So after meeting you guys and listening to what you're doing, suddenly you go, wow, somebody really is following suit. I always thought Matt Ford's, he's the man. He, he just makes things happen. It doesn't matter. You always want to see something different. You want to see improvements around the track, mm-hmm. for the track sizes, the track widths, mm-hmm. the safety fences, the facilities all around. You know what? You guys are doing that. So uh, I think I, the big thing for the clubs is it's, uh, we need to get the supporters back in because without the supporters coming to the clubs, they don't have the revenue to do all the things that you know needs done. When you look at the, the, the age profile of the supporters and, and the British Speedway, it's, it's very old. Uh, we've tried to encourage the kids. When you come to one, one of our meetings now, you'll see 130 kids running up the football pitch chasing the tiger at heat 10. Yeah. But they bring their parents. You know, that's what you've got to do, get the kids back and, and make it an event. There's a lot of old supporters. Well, why have you got so many kids here? But if we don't have the kids, there will be no future. So you know, It's giving people good facilities, and I understand, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are passionate about the sport and trying to make it survive by hook or by crook. And it's, you know, the big steel and borrowing to just get the club back on tracks again. So it's, it's, it's easy for a lot of people to criticise the clubs. We're fortunate we've got a strong business that's allowing us to, to do what we're doing. And hopefully, you know, some of the things we've tried, you know, recently we've just tried and we've got the supporters behind them and said, look, okay, we need to get the fan base up. We're going to trust you. We're going to give free tickets to anybody who's never been at Speedway in the last 12 months. But you, the wow. fans, are wow. going to give them the tickets and you're going to meet them at the gate and you're going to police. And that's been tremendous. And we've brought four, three, four, five hundred fans, each meeting new fans, and they're coming back. And so so uh, that's one idea that's working. And hopefully other clubs will maybe see it working and try it. 
The other part is certainly the riders have got a big part to play in the sport because it has to be a show. We need showmen actually on the track, getting amongst the fans, getting up and arguing with everybody, having a kid on fight in the, in the pits. All of that. I mean, that's where like, that, that, I, 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 I don't know I, I I don't <laughs> if you ever saw Danny Ayers, but that's what he's fantastic at. You know, he's, and a lot, of, a lot of guys that doesn't come naturally to, but he's, you know, he wins heat two, the reserve race, and he's out like this with his arms out to the fans, and the fans love it though. It's bums on seats, and that's that's what it needs more of. And um, the thing about that as well, you know, he picked up more individual sponsorship, sponsorship from, from fans from just the because fans he's an extrovert. Sure. Really, you know, uh-huh. it's a bit uh, like the sports, like like darts. Darts is now an event. You know, still, guys throwing darts at a board, but people go to watch that because it's an event. It's a you know they have a drink and it's the lights and it's the girls and it's all the stuff that adds on a bit like the speedway grand prix. You know, there's so many sports that we're in competition with now. You need more than just 15 one minute races and some tractors going around every four heats. And you need to you need an hour and a half of to keep people's attention because they can go to football, they can go to rugby, and it's it's constant. So it is about that whole time they're there trying to keep their keep them engaged for that whole period. Um, there's kids, there's kids that drag their parents along because they just want to come and meet the tiger and race the tiger and get a picture. Yeah, the, the mascot so it's the mascot is so important. I don't know why you know if clubs don't have mascots to get that next generation of supporter on the kids just they, if you ask them what the score is or who's in each race they wouldn't know they would just know when they're going to race the tiger mascot yeah, that's it. you know that's, that's, that's you know and they can yeah. we do this thing where we they throw balls at the tiger and whoever hits them gets a prize and the kids all get a sweet at the kids race and just stuff like that that's small stuff and you know you get a few diehards that get upset with it and this is taking up when's the next race happening but you've got to think bigger picture long term that that's, that's what's going to engage younger people to, to come yeah. back certainly things in the sport have got to change you know, a lot of riders where they're riding for all different teams as well you, know, you can see some riders that are sitting behind the back tyre of a guy and are, are they thinking I'm racing in another country tomorrow I've got another match tomorrow I'll just sit here and, and take that it becomes boring uh, and you know, we've seen a bit of that that, that season where it's just follow the leader. You know, people, yeah. you know, people won't come for that. You know, we, we need to have safe tracks, safe fences, so the riders they do take chances, but make it as safe as possible. But if that continues, yeah. where you see watch the television, you just see race to the first corner. First, yeah, the first yeah. corner. It's I think speedway's finished. If that's if that's what it's going to be, in the old days. And I know the bikes are more and more powerful, and we need to look at the way. We set up tracks. I mean, some people are saying to me, they're that powerful now, we need to have slick tracks. Because with slick tracks, at least a rider knows what's going to happen. If you start putting heavy tracks down, they're thinking, I'm going into this, what's going to happen now? The bikes are that powerful. I'm not sure you're a rider, you'll understand yeah. what that, but that, a lot of people are saying that to me, both riders and managers of teams that have changed, that, you know, they've changed their racetrack and they're saying we're making it a lot more slicker and we're seeing better racing. And this year, you know, with your help, we're going to design the track and make it wider. And hopefully, have a couple of racing lines because that's where we've been shot. It's been too narrow. Hopefully, that'll make it more exciting. Big, expensive media fence makes the riders feel a bit safer. Um, you see some riders there that come in and they go around that fence, and it's just amazing. You know, it's just amazing to watch. You know, we had the you and I had this conversation when I came back. I came over a few weeks back, and. The same thing. I remember walking, looking at the facility and the track, the, the shape of the track. For any of you that haven't been there, you know it's uh, it's got such a, a similarity for me. I, I had a small Bradford feeling to it because of the banking on the corners. Mm-hmm. Although it's a narrow, little bit more narrow, of course, mm-hmm. and a little bit different size, but that that feeling of, of um, running into those corners and going in low and then drifting it up and, and chasing the dirt line and then looking for trying to find the lines it almost looks frightening at one point because you know you got to touch the fence oh, yeah. but at one point once you get to that speed and, and the way the track rides you up there you're not going to hit the fence it just takes you up to the you point do, yeah. and then you come back you just have to get used to it and you can't be afraid of it well, that's so, so true and we, we see that this year with in our team you see you know, guys in our team that are just ride defence, every race they ride defence, and other guys, the young boys, to be fair, that you just tell they're just weary, but they'll go to another track and, you know, do much, much better where it's not having to go into the bends as fast. And, you oh, know, sure. You yeah. got it, that's all part of experience. Learning, and, and yeah, absolutely. Having a, and having a home track advantage is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I think with, like we said before, that making a few adjustments to your track, I don't think you need to do a lot, but, you know, a little bit wider, Later. as we said, and mm-hmm. a couple of things, you guys, you guys know yeah. what to do now, but if you take Bikes today are definitely more powerful. They're more aggressive. They're much more difficult to ride than they used to be. Mm-hmm. However, the tracks haven't changed. Mm-hmm. 
a lot in especially in England. If you go over a lot of the places, mm-hmm. they haven't changed really. So they're yeah. still the same as they were when I came in the early nine or you know the late eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. And um, some have, some haven't. The bikes have gotten have outgrown the tracks in most cases that I mentioned to you. Mm-hmm. But now you're starting to see with the new Bellevue and some of the other clubs are understanding like. Torin for me, you know, is still the, the greatest track mm-hmm. in the Speedway world today. It's just, it, the, obviously the stadium is beautiful, yeah. but the racetrack is not really big, hardly any dirt on it whatsoever. And you get some of the best racing ever because the riders just, it's so wide and you have racing lines here, there, mm-hmm. and everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's almost more scary to be in front than it is to be at the Because you know someone's, someone's, someone's coming, someone's coming someone's, yeah. You've got to have your, your stuff together, you know. Yeah. And that's quite a slick track, isn't it? It's really quite slick, but you have options, and the racing stays quite close. You saw in the Grand Prix a couple mm-hmm. weeks back, too. It was unreal. Yeah. So um, it, it's possible, but obviously we're talking about different materials. We're yeah. talking about different everything. But uh, to, to make something similar but completely different, yeah. you, you have the options in Glasgow. The other big thing for us is the whole social media use. You know, we are very, very fortunate that it's just as fans that do it for us. It's not okay. We've got a company behind us, but we're not spending thousands of pounds on marketing. You know, it's mostly social media with some great fans that are love the club and do it in their own time. You know, we've got the highest following of any club in Britain on Facebook, Twitter, or on Instagram, and now on Snapchat. And that's going to engage with more young people as well. And more, more clubs need to do more on social media because yes, okay, some of them would be in Glasgow and may never come and pay money to get in the gate, which ultimately is what you want. But a lot of them will be, you know. Well, you know what? I added my notes to ask you questions about this because exactly your social media is something I've started to follow more and more, yeah. and understanding that that's something that everybody talks about in your fan base yeah. and the people around. Look what Glasgow Tigers are doing. You know, yeah. and, and that's I'm not just saying that now. It's right. the truth. It's it is, and now I follow you guys and everything you're doing. And there'll be every club will have techie techie fans that would be happy to do that to help their club. I'm sure they would. Oh, man. Um, Without doubt. You know, but the difference is that, that you are leading it, and it's not with respect to someone of my age. Mm. <laughs> you your dad um, <laughs> doing it. and that's what it needs to be. That's where the, the sport needs to go. Yeah, is to have people of your age. Not you know. I've always said that when the old bloke is standing in the way of progress, is you. You know it's time to step right. to one side, and that's, that's, that's it one is the because problem we've got in Britain. because it is still so niche, especially in Glasgow. Glasgow, everyone knows it's a football-dominated city. You've got Rangers and Celtic football club. All the papers is just football, football, football. So it, for us, it's all about awareness. We believe Speedway is a great product. Uh, we believe we've enhanced that with some of the extra things we do during a meeting, and that's why we've done these taster tickets because we believe when people come and try it. They want to come back, they can have a drink, they can walk around the stadium, nobody's swearing or wanting to fight with anyone. You know, it's a nice place for families to come. And the good thing is, after each meeting we've had, where we've had all these new fans, we get loads of reviews on TripAdvisor and Facebook. Never been before, it was fantastic. I'll definitely be back. So wow. it might be a slow burner. You know, we want it to happen yesterday. Yeah. Um, but but it might it might take a you know a few years, you know, to get to the kind of numbers we're looking for. But there's you know, likes a rugby union in Glasgow, the Glasgow Warriors. You know, I remember going to watch Glasgow Warriors 10, 15 years ago. They were getting like six, 700 people. Now they're selling out 10,000 at their home matches. Again, it took a few years, and um, but but they can get there. And and people are, a lot of people are kind of falling out of love with football, especially in Scotland. Um, you know, <laughs> the secrets to kids. Secrets to kids. How do you work with social media? Well, we do have a, we've got a couple of guys, um, again, that are, that are just right into it. Um, and it's all about just adding followers, doing, you know, shared prizes, competitions, all that stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, yes, you put the odd bit of money behind a post, but you're talking about £50, £100 behind a post. You're not talking about thousands of pounds. Um, and again, it's just, it's getting out there. Um you know, it's, it's getting out there. It's good for our sponsors as well, obviously, because you know because we've got so many followers. If they've got their logos on the guys' bikes or Kevlar's, they're getting seen more often as well. I guess that's the <laughs> the key thing. And Stefan has helped me a lot with my stuff too. With when it comes to social media, and I'm constantly asking him questions, and he's usually got some sort of a, a cool update or something else we want to do. And we did our own app a few years ago that they built for mm-hmm. me, which is really cool. But since it's, now you got Instagram, and Snapchat, and all that, right. nobody really turns to an app. No, well, we've got an app as well. Good. You're right. <laughs> and one good thing are apps for that the, the fans can vote for the rider of the night when they're in the stadium. You're using it, so so yeah. they can vote for the rider of the night, and then the, the guy gets the trophy at the end of the. 
I mean, and the rest. Yeah, and you can have your fixtures and all your stuff there. All that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can, that, you can yeah. push things. So if there's a rain off, you can push it to the phone to say match is cancelled. That's so cool. We're going to have to oh. do something about our podcast now, Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's raining. <laughs> but the, the secrets to kids, we need to get the kids into the, the sport. I remember going down to Cardiff, the first race I went down to Cardiff with the manager, Stuart. We, and we met, met Gordon there, and I looked at the fan base and I thought, we should have brought brochures. I mean, our business is mobility vehicles for old people and, and disabled people. <laughs> when I looked at the age group and Gordon, I thought, we'll bring some brochures <laughs> down here the next day. business here, but it starts <laughs> It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is something we could go on and on and on, and uh, it's always fun. I would love to have a, a longer talk and, and uh, really dig into it to Speedway as we see it today but um, you know we're here for a dinner too and uh, I think and I, there's I need to give a kilt on and it's going to take it takes a long while to get a kilt on <laughs> you know what and I had a kilt with me too and they lost my luggage did they really? yeah <laughs> no, I don't I, believe a lot of it yeah. don't, don't worry about it we've got a spare <laughs> one here for you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Oh, got a whole Jimmy cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, the um, if I go look at one more thing, the future for Glasgow next year. Obviously, you guys. Um, when is the AGM meeting, your annual meeting for deciding? This one. Next, next morning, morning. middle of November. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the new points. We'll be able to you know tie down what the team's going to be and. Oh, been an exciting year. We've got a few plans for next year that make it more exciting. The, obviously, the big one is changing the track. We'll get a few more racing lines. Uh, sure. We'll be doing that in a few weeks' time. We'll be starting that. So we're all ready. I'll be, yeah, I'll be curious to see that as it, as it goes, too. And, uh, well, we just bought the now. land next door, which is another six acres of land. And we're looking at training tracks and all sorts of things in there and customer wow. parking. So. We want a Scottish world champion one day. Well, first of all, we want a, a decent Scottish speedway rider that's, that's in the leagues, but ultimately a Scottish world champion would be nice one day. Well, this is cool because the, the lady that uh, stamped me into the country uh, earlier too, she said, uh, uh, excuse me though, but are there any Scottish guys that are doing what you do? And I said, um, yeah, there are some Scottish guys. And I said, right now you, you have a lot of good riders here in the United Kingdom, if you want to put it like that. And I said, but... Another reason why I'm here in Glasgow is because they have a lot of plans to make sure that you have a Scottish top rider in the future. He's like, oh, I really hope so. <laughs> that was your immigration agent, so that was pretty cool. Oh, that's good. <laughs> they were talking about it, too. I take it you've checked back his history just where he's great, great, great kind. Yeah, case, yeah, he's got I've, I've, I've looked all the way back to the Pilgrim Fathers. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, I mean there's no Scottish seed in there anyway. No, I haven't found it. <laughs> I've, not, I've not gotten beyond the south of England and, 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 and the Hancocks. And so I actually have got yeah, but he's not interested in history. He's an American. He's only looking forward to American. He's not like history. <laughs> well, see, see Stefan, you guys have the show in Sweden there, right? The, about, wasn't it about the all for Swedish? All for Sverige? All for Sverige, yeah. It's, it's all for Sverige. For the Americans, isn't the American people come to Sweden and they're trying to find their ancestry? Exactly, and it's quite popular. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it they win? They have to do like a crazy competition to, to win... Is it just to find you more about your ancestors, or can you win like a free green card to come to Sweden? <laughs> I don't think that you get a free green card, but you can meet your ancestors. Well, I mean, right Donald on. Donald Trump's mother came from Scotland. <laughs> Did she? I don't know. Yeah, she was from Scotland. Not sure we advertise that. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll save that for another another day. <laughs> maybe another day. Uh, all right. Well. um... Maybe we should have the 45 seconds. Yeah, go for it, for sure. I was going to grill these guys for their future and what they were going to build in their team next year and throw all kinds of exciting ideas and options that they should do and think about some, you know, young American guys or <laughs> maybe some other young American guys or maybe like a even a Swede, who knows? Or an American guy. Or an American guy, guy or maybe... A, <laughs> so uh, I mean I, the thing is they can't decide if the, the young means like 47 or 48 and <laughs> below or <laughs> but we like to get people talking so what the heck <laughs> yeah, go for it go ahead move on Stephen. yeah the, four, the 45 seconds is a point in the in the podcast where we get to know a guest a bit more so we will ask quick questions and we want you to all to answer really really quick the first thing that comes up in your in your head okay so as many questions as we can in in 45 seconds and uh, we, we need to pick one of you guys because it's impossible to do all three i vote uh, for jerry you vote for jerry no, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm old like gordon not as old as gordon <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting there 
Let's see. No, Peter, Peter's the best. He's, he's, he's okay, we're, we'll run, we're going to run with Peter then. All right. Okay. This is cool because we tailor made our questions to fit Gordon and Jerry in the beginning before we got hooked right. up with Peter. So this will, these will be good. <laughs> so talk about when the electricity came out and that sort of thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just going to change it a little bit here. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, here we go. You tell me when you're ready, Stefan, and then I'll, I'll fire the questions. Yeah. I just have, have one question about the, the kilts. Is it true that you're hanging loose under the kilts? The kilts, the yeah, a true Scotsman does, that's right, yep. That's it absolutely is true. true, yep. What does that mean, hanging loose? Commando. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get one of those. Huh? I'm uh, I'm ready, just get going, and I start the timer okay. now. Oh, wait a minute, hang on, stop, don't start yet, because when you hit the 45 seconds, you got to say, eh, or something, all right? Okay. Oh, yeah, I, th- I think the, the phone will, so or otherwise right, okay, I do. Cool. Very good, okay. tell me when you're ready. Are oh, you ready? ready. Okay, let's go now. John McGinnis or Greg Hancock? Rick Hancock. Been around the Isle of Man? Nope. What hobby would you uh, have gotten? What hobby would you get into if you had the time and you weren't and it wasn't an issue? Um, or money wasn't an issue. I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. What job would you uh, be terrible at? Um, a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> what skill would you like to master? Um, playing a guitar. Are you early or late? Uh, on time. <laughs> <laughs> what takes up much of your time? Speedway and children. <laughs> and <Best> work. <laughs> <laughs> Best place on earth? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there it is. Can we let him answer that? <laughs> yes. The Peugeot Ashfield Stadium in Glasgow, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Home of the Glasgow Tigers. <laughs> I think that's it for today. Great. Okay, Stephen. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Maybe we'll yeah, see you nice over here one yeah, day. You're welcome. Come and Glasgow anytime. Oh, thank you. I will. Absolutely. So you need to get back to the end of season dinner dance now, huh? Yes, it's just going to... Uh, Greg, Greg's, Greg's, got his, Greg's got his Highland dancing to do in a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> to get an update for that on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll try yeah you never, you never know. <laughs> okay, so guys, don't don't forget to follow us on Instagram and and Twitter on Real Forty Five Podcast. Maybe we'll see some dance moves in Greenland. Yeah. Maybe is the key word right there. Or or oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice talking Good to you. Okay, okay. Cheers. 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 All the best. Thanks, Thanks you guys, yeah. and uh, remember everybody. Next week, next Friday, we'll have another podcast, and uh, we're really excited and. Uh, Uh, we have a guest that's going to come on uh, who's living in the U.S. He's not actually from the U.S., but he's living there. And I'm going to keep you in suspense and not tell you until next Monday on our social media, Real 45 Podcast. So uh, it's pretty cool, and um, we have to be somewhat discreet once in a while. So thanks for listening. You guys have an awesome day and a great weekend. And I always like to say to keep it sideways and uh, grin to win. With Stefan and Greg Hancock, we vibe out and have real talk. So tune in and check this out. Yeah, today is a new day. Let's seize it now and get hype. We talking about our careers, our family, and just life. Yeah, share my story with you. Inspiration like every day. Real 45, we gon' keep it live. I keep